<laughs> Here you go. Uh, amen. God bless you, Pastor, and God bless you this morning. It's good to be here, isn't it? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So I, I, I was, uh, as Pastor was talking, I was sitting there thinking, as we're getting ready to go into 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. You can go ahead and turn there. I want to ask this question. How many of you have ever been seen in the wrong light? especially by people that you love. Yeah. And how many of you have ever had to defend yourself yeah. <laughs> to people that you love? It would seem like if the people loved you and you loved the people, it seemed like they would see y'all. Y'all would kind of see eye to eye, doesn't it? Yeah. But you know that's not the way life is. Many times it's the people that you love that just don't see you right that just don't see you right. And Lord have mercy. Sometimes that causes us a lot of uh, uh, hurt. It causes us sometimes even to get angry when they don't see us right. Because you know what you want to do is, well, let me just talk about me. What I want to do is go and I want to get all up in their face and tell them, look, that's not me. You're not seeing me the right way. And I want to shake them and say, don't you see that I love you? And don't you understand that I wouldn't do anything to hurt you knowingly? And don't don't you understand that I just want to be here for you? Oh my God, it would seem like that, but that's just not how it is. And so when we can see that this has been going on down through the ages, you're not the only one that go through it. It's just people. It's just people. When we get to uh, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, that's what was going on with Paul. Paul loved the Corinthians. He absolutely loved the Corinthians. And so they had allowed some people to come in to uh, talk in their ear, uh, to tell them some things about Paul. And actually they lied about Paul. And y'all, that's going to happen to us. We're going to have people to lie on us for no reason. Sometimes it's people that don't even really know you. Sometimes they don't even know you. They now, know of you. Now, Lady Deborah, I could see very easily, uh, let me just use two people for example, somebody like you, or Sister Cynthia, I could see people very easily get the attitude, well, they think they this, I think it. You know, people who mind their own business, that's not really in the mix or nothing like that, got your mind on your family. You got your mind <laughs> on two of you're supposed to do. And P, I can see very easily, because I've heard people say that about you. You know, you, you know she got to know that. She thinks she didn't. That, that, but, but really, what drew me to you, among other things, for first was, was that I didn't hear you talking about people. Amen. And I, I just couldn't, I can't stand no cackling in. You know, you just, you know, and so um, I just can see that how people will get the wrong impression. And if you don't know who you are, Amen. and I'm going to tell y'all the truth, man, people keep me praying. Amen. <laughs> they keep me praying because, see, I got an a, a ignorant streak. And even after I give them a pass, hours and hours afterwards, I got a little something sitting on my shoulder telling me what I should have told them, what I should have said. You know, it's okay. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Because when you had time, after you had time to think about it, <laughs> you go back and say, you know, I really could have told him. That's the honest truth. You ain't told nothing but the truth, Sister Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> like I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that is so true. So we're just gonna have a real conversation today because we all need this. Because people are just not gonna, you know, people are not going to act the way we think they ought to act. And uh, people will just do. And when I say people, I'm throwing us in there too because we're no different from anyone else. We'll do the same thing. And so, you know, it's just, it's just um, it's, it hurts, though, when you have to defend yourself. When you know in your heart you don't mean anything by whatever it is. When you know in your heart that you have love in your heart 
for that person. You have love in your heart. So what we have to do, we hear it all the time from our pastor, and, and you know, sometimes I'm, I think sometimes, oh my God, he's just being so redundant about this or that. But the truth of the matter is, you have to walk in the spirit. You have to walk in the spirit. And that doesn't mean walking around with a long white robe on with your hands, you know, like you praying all the time. You got to walk in the spirit, the spirit of God that envelops you. You know, we say we saved. Then if we say we're saved, the spirit of the living God lives on the inside of us. And the spirit of the living God will comfort and teach us and guide us. And so then uh, you'll know when it's time for you to zip it. And you'll know when it's time to proceed and keep forward. So in this last section of Corinthians, Paul challenged those rebels in the church, including those that were false teachers. And he had to enforce and then also defend his apostolic ministry. And so he refers directly to his accusers and answers their uh, false charges. So one thing that we have to understand is that Paul was not defending himself personally, but he was defending his ministry and his apostolic uh, authority. So he says, now I, Paul, myself beseech you. I'm in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the first verse. He says, I myself, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be, I may not be bold when I'm present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So his first step was to correct the misunderstanding that existed in the minds of the people with reference to his work. And so what we're getting ready to see now is that Paul talks about that because those people did not understand how to wage spiritual warfare. They didn't understand how to use spiritual authority, and they didn't understand how to measure spiritual ministry. So here's one thing we have to understand. When we talk about those uh, persons who don't understand us and take us the wrong way and attack us for no reason or another, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. It's so easy for us, though, to look at a person, Sister Cynthia, because uh, if, if, if that person dislikes us or if that person, if we just, because the fact of the matter is you're just not going to float everybody's boat. Can you just say amen to that? You know, and you just, we need to come to grips with that. I would love if everybody loved me, but I know they don't. And so I have to understand that, and I have to understand that the flesh is the flesh. And so what we have to understand when we're talking about spiritual warfare, Mother Helen, is that verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare, our warfare are not what? Carnal, but mighty through God till the pulling down of strongholds. And so the rebels in the church, the very first, uh, the ver first few verses that we read, what they were saying is Paul was real, had a, had, Paul had, was really brave when he wasn't around them. They were saying that he was courageous when he wrote the letters. He used the power of the pen to whip them down. And so they were saying, well, he, he's doing that because he's not here face to face. But if he was face to face with us, he'd be very timid and even weak when he was here. So Paul wanted uh, them to know to trust the Lord and not the servants. So he deliberately prayed down his own authority and his ability. And so uh, what he says then is that when you, when you look at spiritual warfare, y'all, we have to understand the devil, uh, he's crafty. He's crafty. There are many names for him. One of them is he is a deceiver. He is a deceiver. But now, we're not ignorant 
concerning the devices that he uses. And so this is one thing Paul is trying to uh, talk to them about. So because the Corinthians, who, who were led by those false teachers, judged Paul's ministry by the outward appearance, they completely missed the power that was there. And that happens to us so many times. As Pastor Blanna said, you know, it, if he's heard, you know, like I, when I walk around with my nose up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I walk around with my nose up in the air and this or that. Uh, and, you know, people will say that because they're judging what? They're judging the outward appearance. They haven't taken the time to get to know the person. They haven't taken the time to get to know you on the inside. And, and Lady Deborah, uh, uh, a lady, especially a married lady, ain't got no business looking all around no way. <laughs> what you looking for? You, you keep your head straight and, and go on. You got no business. Like the old people say, showing your teeth, grinning in everybody's face. Well, now, that's the honest truth. You may, you, if you're a lady. Yeah, that's and, true. And so, you know, if, if you are, the thing about it is, is that Satan is going to make all wrong things appealing. You know, the, the right thing is never going to be appealing. It's, a great it's point. never going to look right. The, the, the right thing. It's just the same way as uh, uh, eating. Healthy stuff don't never taste good. <laughs> this stuff they are good for you, boy, you talking about it tastes good. That's true. That's so funny because you know what? And I'm just gonna speak to that point you just made, uh, and really, in, in, on on the, on the natural side, because I've had people tell me, "Girl, you you look married. You act married. What is that? You know what I'm saying? Well, well my God, I should. <laughs> I should. Okay. So um, when we talk about spiritual warfare, don't get it twisted. You love the Lord. And you say you say, you're in a spiritual warfare. You're in spiritual warfare. It just doesn't come for one person. And sometimes it comes one uh, thing after the other. That's what warfare is when we'll get to that point in just a, a minute. But it actually, it is a, a campaign the devil is on to tear you down, to, to cause you to sit down, to cause you to shut up. To, to, to cancel out your witness, to cancel out your testimony. That's what the devil wants. But see, we know the devil like that. That's why he says we're not ignorant concerning the devil's devices. We know that's what he does. And so if we know the strategy that someone is going to use, then we know to operate in the strategy that we've been given. And, and his, his battleground, Lady Deborah, is our soul, mm -hmm. which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. He's gonna get in there in your mind. I mean, that's you know. I don't know if you've ever. I know you have. Everybody has. Is you can't get it off your mind. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm. you was doing fine until, and that 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 thing is just going going, and he's gonna do that. And he's gonna work with your will, and Lord, your emotions. Yeah. And yeah. so, I, like I said, people keep me praying. Yeah. The Lord, but it's not until I can admit that it's greater than me. As long as I'm trying to figure out how to handle it and trying to handle it, I'm just like going around a mountain. But the moment that I surrender and I, I admit to God my lack of strength, he takes care of it. His grace is sufficient. Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Blaine. Anybody else? So uh, when you look at the uh, Judaizers, those false teachers that were coming in and helping the Corinthians to feel some kind of way about Paul, you know, they just uh, poured uh, gas on the fire. Uh, and they didn't need but a little bit. People are fickle. Y'all know that. People, people are fickle. They are fickle. And so they didn't need, they loved Paul while he was there. And all it took was just, the, you know, the false teachers to come in for just a minute and tell them this and tell them that. And then they started to change the way they looked at Paul. And so uh, they were looking at things according to the flesh and not according to the spirit. 
And so they, the Judaizers, it was easy for them because people, we all look at the outward appearance. So people, the Corinthians were looking at them and looking at their oratorical uh, powers and looking at the commendations. You remember what Paul says, we don't have to have any commendations from anybody because when we come to you, you are our uh, letters. You are our letters. And so um, Paul took a different approach, though. He, um, though he was a human as anyone else, he did not depend on the human, but on the divine. The spiritual weapons provided by the Lord. And y'all, we have to pull uh, on those. When we're going through and when we're fighting, a spiritual battle. We have to pull on those things that's been given to us by the Lord to fight those spiritual battles. Let's look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter. This is a very familiar scripture. We're all familiar with it. Ephesians 6 and 10. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And the Bible says, finally, my brethren, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. So then that is something that we have to do. Sometimes we don't want to put on the armor of God because we want to give him what for. Don't we jack it? (laughs) And then (laughs) we want to feel good. We want to feel justified in our feelings. And um, now, and I'm going to say this, uh, you know, we don't deny our feelings. We don't deny our feelings. Some people would say, oh, you shouldn't be feeling like that. You shouldn't. But y'all, we're human. So we have emotions. So don't deny your feelings, but then you work through your feelings. You put on the whole armor of God. Lady Deborah, the voice in my head tell me, say, I'm tired. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And, and look, and then they, they keep doing the same thing over and over again. I'm tired. I can't see no end to this. And you just keep beating me up. You keep bringing things, same thing, and that's, that's, that's the voice of it. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, so what I do about that, put on the whole arm? You, <laughs> you, walk, you walk in the spirit and you walk in love. Yes. You walk in love. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Go ahead. What? Go ahead. Because this, what you're saying is going to help everybody. Let's just talk about it. This is a lesson for everybody. It's going to help us all. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you just want to feel what you feel. You know, like some people, like I was just told yesterday about a situation, and, and the person was telling me, that I should do this, or I should think like this, or feel like, but I told her, let me feel what I feel. And then I can kind of work my way through it once I think I feel comfortable. Oh, I I agree with you about that. I agree with you about that. I don't think anyone, and well, y'all, and I'm saying this for us as a point of, when we're dealing with someone, y'all, let's not tell them how they should feel. Let's not do that. Let's not do that because we don't, <laughs> you feel what you feel. That's right. You feel what you feel. And uh, we should allow another person to, that's, that's their right. We should allow that. We should allow that. Now, after you feel what you feel, now we don't use the occasion of how we feel to attack someone. We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that either. But we process our feelings. You have to, y'all, or you'll end up uh, doing something you really don't want to do, either hurting someone else or hurting yourself. And that's, that's, we don't want to do that either. So you process your feelings, you work through that, and then you come back and, 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 and start over again, start over again. But you realize, and I thank you for that uh, uh, moment of honesty, because yes, you have to go, you have to work through that. Paul did. Paul did. Paul had, you know, he was trying to understand that thing. All I've done for y'all, and this is, this is what you do. And I know we, we feel like that too. All that I've done for you, and this is the thanks I get. This is the, re- this is the, this is what you do. I 
Yeah, I'm gonna let uh, Jeff do that. Oh no, Jeff is taking. Can you get that microphone? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. I, I agree with wholeheartedly with what Jackie said. She's saying basically, I think she's saying the same thing you're saying is that you feel how you feel. Mm -hmm. And for you to deny your feelings will not get you to the right place. No, it won't. Because basically, you, you may be the person that end up uh, going back to the job, killing everybody or something, because you were denying your feelings. But I have to, and this is the reason that instruction in righteousness is so important to me, because w the Bible talks about it, receive the, the word of God, which is able to save your soul, your engrafted soul, the engrafted word of God. Once I actually believe the word of God, then I can make a rational decision whether or not I want to live according to my feelings or living, live according to the word of God, which says walk in the spirit. My feelings are never going to be justified. Absolutely. Now, I have to understand that my feelings are legitimate, but they are not justified. I may legitimately feel like I want to kill you, but that's, I can't, I'm not justified in taking nobody else's life. And so then I have to take away the, the power from my feelings because I would dare say that the majority of the people that are in the Arkansas Department of Correction is today, they're there because of their feelings, not, be, not because of the spirit. And so, <laughs> I'm saved, but I still could be subject to the same things as anybody else. It depends upon my thinking. And so to me, I'm here to help my thinking. If, I, if, if our house had not come to the brink of destruction, my marriage, I would not actually believe that you can embark upon a course of action that will destroy your marriage. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong you think your marriage is because feelings, mind, will, and emotions, if, if, my, if I get in my feelings, I get tired. I don't want to deal with this no more, or whatever. The same person that thought that wasn't no way that our house going to be, I'm gone. I'm gone. I leave on my mind. So I, for me, the spirit has to Lady Deborah direct my soul. Because my soul is, is lost. My soul is fleshly. My soul is worldly. My soul is, I want what I want. Mm -hmm. All the time. Come on. Let me say this last thing. This morning I thought about my daddy. And actually, the longer my, that my daddy is, is, had been, the longer between his death and now, the higher I think of him. The higher I think of him. And actually, he was a hero. Because it would have been better for him. My daddy got, my daddy got sober when he was 48. And he died at 87, so he had been sober for about almost 40 years. But when you get sober or when you stop a behavior and you go back in a house with the same people, you still going to suffer them, them years. And so it would have been better for him to go and start a new family and go. And, but because he loved us, he couldn't go nowhere, so he stayed there. And my mama used to tell us, she said, you wonder why sometimes I just go off and take a trip? Because I just look at him and get mad about the stuff that he did back some time ago. And so the mind, the will, and the emotion, mine, yours, everybody else, you know, I want you to be perfect. I don't want you to be affected in your mind, will, and emotion. But that's not reality. No, it's not. That's not real. That's all. No, no, that, no. Very good points. Very good points. And so, as we uh, look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and uh, continue on, he says, To put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For 
We wrestle not. He's just reinforcing. What he said over in uh, Corinthians, he's reinforcing it here in Ephesians. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Then it goes on to tell you the things that when you're putting on the whole armor of God, what you're putting on. And so um, what we have to understand as spiritual as 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 when when as spiritual beings what we have to understand is that you cannot fight spiritual battles with carnal weapons you cannot fight spiritual battles with carnal weapons and what i have found out is one of the most used carnal weapons is our mouth Yes, it is. Wow. And I'm going to say this, and I know you know it, but it just bears reinforcing when you put something out there, yeah. you can't take it back. When you put it out there, you can't take it back. So you be sure and very sure. First of all, you can stand up behind what you say. And then next of all, are you going to be able to bear what you say? One of the things, and I'm going to let you go, one of the things, one, one of the things that I live by, it, it, it has helped me. I'm not, I don't make it 100%, but one of the things I believe in my heart is don't dish it out if you can't take it. Amen. Don't dish it out if you can't take it. If you're willing to stand up and give me what for, or you give somebody what for, and you dress them up and down and tell them about themselves, and somebody turns around and do you like that, and all you do, so you fall out. Fall all the way out. Don't dish it out if you can't take it. Uh-uh. Don't do that, Pastor Blaine. Pastor Blaine. <laughs> Absolutely. And so let's go back over to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. He says, for the weapons of our warfare, here we go again, are not carnal, but they are mighty, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, the word warfare, let's talk about that for just a moment. That word here, uh, it comes from uh, uh, the Greek word stratia, stratia. You know, we get stratia, which means an expedition, a campaign. Now, when you have a campaign, you just don't do something one time. You come together and you create how it's going to be done. You create the way it's going to be done. You come together and, and, and you, you, you wage an all-out attack. You plan for that thing. You plan for it. So the weapons of our warfare, what I'm trying to tell you is that when Satan's coming at you, he has it all outlined. He has it all. It's not no just hit and miss. It's an all-out campaign against what you're standing for, what you're trying to do, what you believe. And, and Lady Deborah, some, you know, some way we might say, well, how do you know that, that Satan is attacking you? I think about the scripture where the scripture said, let the peace of God mm, rule, rule in your, your heart. heart. To, mm -hmm. to the which also, also you are called, called in one and, body. And, and, in one body. Mm -hmm. and, and that, that word uh, uh, rule in the Greek means umpire. You know, umpire calls strikes and, and, and balls and whatever. And the peace. When I see, J Brother Jeff, that, that something is taking my peace, that's, that's, that's just like pain in my body. I can't ignore pain because I, it's there for a reason. God put it there to let me know something's wrong. And when something affects my peace like that, and my problem is I want smooth sailing. I really don't want any problems. Yeah. You know, I don't mind you having problems because I can tell you God going to take care of you. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're right about it. You're right about it. Lord have mercy. We'll just we'll just discount what another person is going through, won't we? We we'll make it a small thing. But Paul understood this. Paul understood that he wasn't just going through or, or just a little bitty thing, that it was an all out all out campaign. And so um there, when we talk about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, there are walls of resistance in the mind of people. And so, don't if you're, these are the things that have to be pulled down, okay? Reasonings that are opposed to the truth of God's word. As uh, we have started to espouse grace and how grace changes everything, what we have found out is that's a large population of people who don't understand grace, therefore they don't believe in grace. They'll say, you know, little things, uh, uh, you know, enough, well, you know, I believe that, um, you know, grace is a gift. Grace is, you know, God's unmerited favor. They'll go that far. But when it comes to uh, what the grace of God actually is and actually does, that's, mm -mm, no. It stops with that because what they'll put on it is uh, a caveat. Yeah, I believe in that, but. But, and so uh, those are reasonings that oppose themselves to, uh, that oppose to the truth of God's word. I, I made, made a post the other day, and that was, I said, first of all, let's get this clear. Nobody is going to heaven because they live right. I mean, and that's just straight scripture. The Bible says you're saved by grace through faith. You're not saved because you kept the law or whatever that you didn't anything wrong and so that was that point that was made and so everybody was fine with it this one lady to get she chirped in and I, I don't even know it I got like 5,000 folks supposed to be friends or whatever but anyway I went to a page and I saw that she was you know involved in this uh, whatever and she says yeah but when you when you get saved you 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 want to live right, uh, you should live right, or whatever. And, and, and I agree with that. I agree that, that uh, God works it within you to bring forth his righteousness. But I knew that in a subtle way, that was a way of trying to undermine the point that was made. Mm -hmm. I never said what you would want to do. You could, you could want to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. What I was talking about was how do you achieve salvation? And you do not achieve salvation through living right. You achieve salvation by God's grace, by him going and dying in our place, and by us placing our faith in that. And so I said that lady that said this. They won't directly sometimes, but they just try to undermine what you're saying to place. And, and I just put on that, uh, she's blocked. And we move on. And, and another lady, a lady out of California, a friend of mine said, thank you, Pastor, because she confused me. And that's one of the primary reasons that we limit who speaks from that podium. Because we don't want a confusing. Like you used to tell me with the boys, you're sending double messages. <laughs> but, you know, you don't want, you know, two messages because then it becomes division. Mm -hmm. If you got two, two visions, then you mm -hmm. become division instead mm -hmm. of unity. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Bland. And so the, the, the walls of resistance, reasoning that are opposed to the truth of God's word. And then another thing, and I know you see this all the time, pride of intelligence. Pride of intelligence. Y'all, all it takes is for us to know a little bit of something. It's a little bit of something. And so Paul was not attacking intelligence, y'all. No, not attacking intelligence, but intellectual, in, intellectualism. Thank you. The high-minded attitude that makes people think they know more than they really do. And so that the, 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 uh, the, 
the Judaizers, the, the um, false teachers were coming in uh, thinking that they knew more than they actually did. So Paul's attitude of humility, that's, that's the weapon. That, that's, a, that's the weapon of a but for us to use. Humility. Humility. Paul's attitude of humility was actually one of his strongest weapons. Because pride plays right into the hands of Satan. Can't you see that? That is so obvious that pride plays right into the hands of Satan. Not only that, Paul used spiritual weapons that we have in our arsenal, the same weapons. We have prayer, the word of God, love. And the power of the Spirit working in our life. And, and neither one of those are appealing to me. No. no, 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 no. And you don't reach for those. Let me just say this. They're not appealing. And neither one of those are the first thing you reach for in your arsenal. You got a whole arsenal of things. But some, sometimes you'll do everything else but reach back for love. Sometimes you'll do everything else. To reach back for prayer. Because you want to. You want to. You want to do it yourself. You want to do it yourself. You want to give them that peace of mind you got left. You ain't got but a peace. And you want to give them that. And so you know. Um, it just behooves us, y'all. It just, you, you just behooves us to walk. You helped me uh, yesterday when, um, you know, we were having a discussion, and you said, love overcomes all. You said, love overcomes all. And sometimes that just helps to calm you down. That just helps to calm you down. When you think... All you got to do is think about sometimes how unlovely you are. That's right. Oh, my God. And everybody don't, you, you everybody don't want to be around you all the time because sometimes you're just unlovely. Sometimes you are just unlovely. Sometimes you just talk too much. Sometimes you just say the wrong thing. That happens to me all the time, y'all. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. When I, especially when I'm around my family. Yeah. You know, I live with a house full or, I, I, you know, I was with a house full of men, the boys and my husband. And, and that was very difficult, Sister Cynthia. It was very difficult. Even so, to this day, it is difficult because men just think differently. Men just think differently. And then, you know, I think in the way I think. So sometimes I actually feel like I'm being attacked by them because we have different thought processes. We just do. And so sometimes rather than engage, I withdraw and just don't want, you know what, y'all, I'm just going to let y'all have it. I'm going to let y'all have it because what y'all saying, no, you make no sense. <laughs> You know what I mean? And so um, we have to understand and we have to utilize. The, 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 the weapons are there for a reason. They're to help us on this daily journey. In this school of faith, Brother Shea, they're there for a reason. So don't, don't get all flustered and, uh, you know, I don't understand why they don't see me like this. I just, I want, you know, I'm trying my best to do it. Just don't, don't. It is what it is, y'all. And it, the thing is, I said, none of those are, are appealing to me. But where he's taking me. And, you know, the Bible talks about the sufferings of Christ being fulfilled in us. It is, Sister Cynthia, my suffering that actually strengthens me. When I go through uh, things that I don't like, um, it gives me a better understanding. Because, to tell you the truth, sometimes I go to seeing myself wrong. Because the Bible talks about, you know, Israel. They said every man, was, his actions was right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. And because, because, I'm, because I think I have good intentions, I start thinking everything I do is good. Mm. Because I have good intentions. And so, uh, when he had, when he, 
when life or Satan or whatever you want to call it knocks me down a few notches. Now, I don't like it. But God is so good that he works everything to my good. And that which maybe was meant to destroy me only makes me better. Absolutely. I'm close with this. The Corinthians saw Paul's meekness as a weakness. And sometimes that's what that, that will happen to us. That's okay. You know, sometimes when we don't speak up and somebody is with us and they say, oh, girl, you let them talk to you like that, you know? Y'all, we, we don't have to show out to let someone know the power that we have. We don't have to show out. Sometimes the power is in walking away. Sometimes the power is in keeping your mouth closed. Brother Alex? Absolutely. It, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, as we said, humility is one of the strongest weapons that we have. It's just hard for us sometimes. It's just hard for us sometimes. But y'all walk in the spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. <laughs>